Hey folks, and welcome back to my lair of electronics, crazy science, including Tesla cores and half-built Tesla coils, induction heaters, and all kinds of electronics. But before I go any further, let's have a fun experiment. I'm going to shoot this pressurized can. Well, it's not that pressurized because most of the shampoo in this can is gone, but I'm going to shoot that with a magnetic gun. And this is the one we're going to use. And here's the museum version of the gun so you can see how it works. Let me tell you a little about these magnetic guns. I'll use this version. This is how they work. They'll take the energy from a battery pack. This is like a 12 volt battery pack. That energy is converted into a much higher DC voltage using a boost converter. And this generates 390 volts from this 12 volts. And that DC electricity is stored in a capacitor bank. Here, yeah, so this uh, 390 volts charges up this capacitor bank, which stores quite a bit of energy. And that energy needs to be suddenly discharged into this coil to generate a very high magnetic field. Now this coil is epoxied, so the wire doesn't un unravel when, the, when that high magnetic field is generated. And the electronic switch that we use, the solid state switch to discharge all that energy is called a silicon controlled rectifier. So there's a stack of them here to discharge all that energy into this coil. And the silicon controlled rectifier is activated with a small battery with a with a push on switch here and here's the battery it's a nine volt battery so that's basic, the basic principle of it and if you have a projectile such as a nail in the bore of this magnet the magnetic field generated will pull the nail through into the bore and about the same time, the magnetic field dies down because it's a very short pulse, but the momentum in the nail is still present, so the nail will keep shooting through. And that's the principle of how these magnetic guns work. And you can actually um, series these up. You can have several of these. And if you get the timing just right, you can get even more momentum. These are the type of projectiles you use. It's just basically a standard house nail, and the end has been sawed off. And uh, these are made of iron. And that's a, that's a prerequisite. You have to have a ferromagnetic metal. And this wood block here has a little magnet in it to hold it in the right place. So it's not, you don't want it this side, you want it that side so it gets pulled this way and shot out that way. If it was the other way around, it would be shot backwards. So that's important. Let's test it. First, we'll put the ammo in our gun. Here it is. It sits in that groove. To charge up the gun, you press the load. I've got a load button here, and I've got a fire button here. So press the load. And when this hits 390 volts, a little blue light will come on in there. Let's see if we can see the little blue light. There it goes. So what that means is that capacitor bank is now full. Now let's get our target, which is here. And we're gonna place this in a location where we're not gonna cause a whole lot of damage. Here's our setup. The gun, the target, a thick piece of styrofoam, and a thick piece of wood. And we're gonna do a slow motion capture on this. This smooth hole here is the entry point. It's kind of dimpled in a little bit. And this sharp one where it's kind of coming outwards is the exit. This is what happens when you fire it without a projectile. Notice the distortion of the very high current on the wires.
So the energy stored in this device when it's fully charged at 390 volts is about a thousand joules. And a thousand joules of energy is discharged in a microsecond or less through that copper coil. So using a regular switch would result in fusion or melting of the switch contacts and you wouldn't be able to open the switch again. So this is typically what is being used here. This is a SCR and this one is what I've used and this is a 70 RAA RIA120 and this can can handle thousands of amps in pulsed mode. If you want to make your own one of these, Uzos has a great website on how to do this with all the technical and practical details shown here and I'm going to give you a link in the description. And this works fine with this, never had a problem with it. So uh, you can get smaller ones too if you want to do a smaller version. Thanks for watching folks and please don't forget to like and subscribe and keep on experimenting.